You're either winning or you're learning. It's everything that's happening below the surface is what determines your future and your destiny and your purpose. Your level of life will rise to your weakest point. Destiny is looking for someone it can depend on. Well, welcome to Think Like a Champion, a podcast dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. I hope you've enjoyed the last few episodes of our podcast where I've had my sons on and we've been talking about various things concerning leadership and family and growing in our lives. And I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm going to fly solo on this one, but you'll see those guys more often in the future as well. But thank you to everyone that likes or subscribes or comments or shares on this podcast. In fact, right now, whatever platform you're on, subscribe to the podcast, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. If there's an area to leave a comment, please do leave a review. Please do. I'd love to hear from you. And let me know what you're getting out of Think Like a Champion podcast. You're making a difference as a part of our community of champions. And we are building a community of champions. Champions are not just limited to sports or athletics, but a champion in life and a champion of others to champion our own lives and to champion other people's success as well, to encourage, to inspire to be fans of and to help support and push forward other people's calling and purpose as well. That, that is what it means to champion somebody else. We start by championing ourselves, championing others. God is the greatest champion of all and he's made us more than conquerors. So you're made to win in life. You're either winning or you're learning. Look at life like that. You're either winning or you're learning. It's not winning or losing. It's winning or learning. Losing is implies that you there's something suffered that you can never get back but learning is something that can help you in the future so see losses as learning opportunities um, nevertheless i want to give you the shortcut to your greatest purpose and destiny in fact i call this uh the shortest way to your purpose and destiny you know i see people trying a lot of new things i see people trying many many careers, many identities, many uh, business ideas, and many people have good hearts and good desires in trying new things. And I'm not, I'm not opposed to trying new things, but so many people are just trying to find that, that perfect purpose or their perfect calling or that viral moment that they can have on social media and, and, and hit the jackpot. But if we would just, instead of doing those things, just work on your habits and work on your character, do the deep work in your soul and you will be able to see yourself in any situation, serving, building, winning. It all depends on building something inside of you. You know, there's a great scripture in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. And it reminds me of how silent character is when it's built. It's built in silence. You see, we understand now why the scripture says in 1 Kings 6, 7, there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool or iron that could be heard in the temple or in the house of God while the temple was being built. It's been discovered now that um, the quarries where the stones were made ready to put into the temple, they were all made beneath the surface. They were under the city. All the preparations were made in silence and secrecy down beneath the tread of busy life. And then when the great blocks were cleft from the bed and hewn, shaped and polished and fitted for their place, they were then hoisted through a shaft to the temple platform and lifted to their exact position. So all the preparations for character go forward in silence and secrecy, the same way that these massive stones were built in secret. They were built 
below the surface. It's everything that's happening below the surface is what determines your future and your destiny and your purpose. What's happening on the inside? We like to say, what's going on in the kitchen? You see, what's going on in the kitchen is what's going to determine what happens on the outside of the kitchen in the dining room and in the dining area, whether it's a home or a restaurant. What goes on in the kitchen is the key. What goes on beneath the surface? What's happening where nobody's looking, what's happening on the deepest core of your being. This is character development, and it's not something that people get rah-rah excited about, but it is the shortcut. If you want the shortest path to your greatest purpose and destiny, it's through the forging of character in your life. And I'll tell you what character is and what many people think it is or isn't. It First of all, character isn't charisma. Character isn't um, just your attitude. Character isn't a gift or a talent. Character isn't just working hard. Character isn't formed from smart people or out of smart people. It's formed out of people who have suffered. And when you learn in suffering the secrets and the lessons of life, when you learn that suffering is, is you can look, Everybody's going to suffer something, but misery is a choice. Suffering is going to happen. Suffering cannot be stopped in life, but misery can be stopped in life. How you respond to that suffering, your attitude during that suffering, because if you can learn to master suffering and that suffering doesn't necessarily mean some evil that's being done to you, although it could mean that as well. But suffer the habit of getting up the same time every day. Suffer through the habit of praying when you don't feel like it. Suffer through the habit of eating the right thing. Suffer through the habit of saying you're sorry to somebody that you offended or hurt. Uh, this is suffering, suffering through the thing you don't want to do to make you become the thing you aren't already and the thing that you have not yet become. Now, look, in ancient Greece, the word character referred to a stamp or a die used to mint the coins or seal documents. Over time, this term evolved to describe character. Character is the engraving, okay? So it really means to carve a character. Now think about this. Character is the carving or the engraving. In other words, when we, when we print money, when we print coins, there is a there is a, a piece of of steel or whatever it's made out of that has the has the engraving of what that thing is going to be. So when you stamp the, the metal or the material, now you've engraved it, you have put in, into it substance and layers and an image that you can't erase. It's not an erasable image. It's not a drawing. It's engraved. It's carved into the metal. It's carved into the rock. It's carved into your soul. It's carved into your, your, your being. This is character. It's carving. It's not something that you just have a first impression on somebody that's just nice and fluffy and then it disappears. It's the mark we leave. It's engraving leaves a lasting mark or impression. Character similarly refers to the lasting, distinctive qualities of a person. The, the aroma that is left after you are gone is your character. Character is the la it's a lasting, defining trait of an individual. The most recognizable aspect of that person is their character. I, I like to use this definition that character is what we have come to believe about a person what we have come to believe about a person. Now, listen, I understand that you might think, ah, how is this a shortcut to this? This sounds like the longest road to my greatest purpose and destiny. But really, it's the shortest way because all other paths are going to force you to start over and over and over until something's engraved inside of you. That's your character. And if you understand it this way, that our thoughts will produce our beliefs. Our beliefs will produce our actions. Our actions will develop our character, our character, excuse me, our habits. Our thoughts turn into beliefs. Our beliefs turn into actions. Our actions consistently performed over time become habits and our habits performed over time become our character. And character is what 
slings you into your destiny. Character is what flings you into and the into the greatest trajectory of your life. It's your character um, and it's formed over time. And remember, if our character is what we've come to expect from a person. So when we say, oh, that guy, he's always late or that girl, she always lies or that person, they're always on time or that person's never on. You come up with whatever example you want what you have come to expect from a person, what we have come to expect from that person is their character. What you've come to expect from me is my character. In other words, if I acted rudely, if I acted um, in a in some sort of uh, disrespectful way, that is either an aber an aberration or it is my character. It's either just an anomaly. It's either just a, I really had a bad week or I really had a bad moment or I'm continually behaving that way when the pressure hits. That's my character. If I'm continually smiling at the future, that's my character. I'm from continually frowning at the future. That's my character from continually responding to people with grace, with kindness, with understanding. That's my character. If I have a bad day, that's not my character. But if I have a bad day towards you continually over and over again, that's what you've come to expect of me. Now you um, now now you understand a person's character. So we know what it's like when when we're having an event, a family gathering, um, a Thanksgiving dinner, anything like that. And we know who's on the list. We know who's on the guest list. <laughs> and certain people make you feel different things. Why does one person make you feel one thing in anticipating the event? Another person might make you feel another way in anticipating the event and in, t in and in anticipating your interaction with that person. Why is that? Because that's what you've come to expect from that person. Isn't it a great, pleasant surprise when that person behaves in a better way than what you've come to expect of them? Because that means that they might be working on their character and that's why they're no longer consistently or we're no longer consistently expecting them to behave that way. But again, that verse that I want to bring you to is there was neither hammer nor ax nor any tool or iron heard in the house while the temple was being built. It was all happening underneath the surface, according to first Kings chapter six, verse seven. So it is when we show up for something, an event, or we show up in our daily life at work, our job, our business, in our family, we have, we create an impression and we have created, we've engraved into one another what we've come to expect from that person. And, but we can change that. We can, develop and build our character. It all starts with your thoughts becoming your beliefs, your beliefs become your action. Now, listen, your thoughts do not become your action, although you've heard me say that many times. I'm just trying to refine this a little bit more so that you can see, break it down in a more granular way so that you can really extract truth from this. Like I of course, I believe Proverbs 23, seven as a man thinks, so is he. But as a man thinks, it doesn't always say as a man thinks, so does he. It's so is he. But as a man believes, so does he. That's why James said faith without works is dead. He's not saying that we're saved by our works. He's saying that true belief is going to persuade you to act in a way consistent with what you believe. Now, when I walked into this studio where we have this awesome team and where we film Think Like a Champion podcast, I came right away through the door and sat on the stool that I am now sitting on. I didn't test the stool. I didn't examine the stool. I didn't turn the stool over. I didn't kick it. I didn't talk to it. I didn't speak it. I just sat in it. What does that mean? I believed that it would hold my weight. Why? Because I bought it for one. I was, I remember buying these stools that were that I'm sitting in number one, number two, I've already sat in it many times. So I've come to expect it. It's its character. Its character is built into my experience with it. Its character is to be able to hold the weight that I put on it. You see, that's character. You can see that now in every area of life. When I walk on a stage, a platform, I'm expecting it to hold me up. That's faith. 
What does faith do? Faith leads you to action. So our thoughts, whatever we consistently think on becomes our beliefs. What we continually believe will turn into action. What we can continually perform as an action will turn into our habits. Our habits, what we continually produce and continually perform those habits, those small habits and the big ones it starts with the small ones, doesn't it? And that those habits turn into our character. And when a person has character, they will they will be catapulted into their destiny rather than just trying to find our destiny and all these different ideas, all these different. Let's move to this city and try to find our destiny there. Let's move to that country or that state or let's move in with this person or let's get rid of this person and add this person to our life. None of those things are going to work. Those are the longest way and you may never even get there. You'll be lost forever, perhaps. But when you simply work on your character, when you simply work on the habits that produce your character, you will run into your destiny. It will come to you. You don't have to go to it. It is attracted to the person that performs consistent habits because destiny is looking for someone it can depend on. Just like I was walking in here looking for a stool I could depend on. Destiny and greatness is looking for someone it can depend on, someone it can rely on, someone who it can say, I've come to expect this from that person. Destiny is speaking. Your destiny is calling out and saying, I want to believe, but I need to see that I can depend on you. Your destiny is shouting from the rooftops. I want to see the habits that form your character so that I can run into you as you are walking in your character. I'm going to run into you. I'm looking for somebody that I've come to expect to believe they'll take this destiny and they'll use it in the right way. They'll take this greatness and they'll use it in the right way. Now, God is the person involved in this, obviously. And you could say your destiny and your greatness and your calling and your purpose is all from God. I'm not discounting that at all. I'm a pastor. I believe God is my best friend. And so I'm all about his involvement in my life. But he will not build my character for me. He will not create my habits for me. I have to do that. He'll do it with me, but he won't do it for me. He'll inspire me. He'll encourage me. He'll speak to me. He'll he'll strengthen me. He'll comfort me when I fail. And he'll encourage me to get back up when I fall. But destiny is out there waiting to see what it can expect from you. If you have gone through the process of taking your thoughts captive and thinking the high things of God, I mean, high in value, high in faith, high in uh, goodness, right? If you focus on those thoughts, they produce beliefs, which produce expectations, which produce actions, which form your habits, which result in your character. And destiny is out there looking for somebody with character. It will run right into you when you're building your character. You know, I think of a great example in the Bible. It's obviously an example we've all heard of, and it's simply the great man named David. Now, I want you to think about how David lived his life. He was a shepherd for his father. His brothers were all supposedly warriors. We don't know if they were warriors in the sense that they were conquered, but we know they were soldiers in the Israel army. OK, and they were in the battle, but they didn't want to fight the giant. Nobody wanted to. But when David heard about this, he was a shepherd and he was taking care of the sheep. He was the youngest son and he was the one that nobody believed in. He was the one that they didn't even think of when Samuel came to David's father, Jesse. He said, hey, I'm God sent me here, Jesse, to one of your sons is going to be king. And he said, well, how about this one? No. 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 He goes through to the I believe the eighth son, which is David. He didn't even the father didn't even remember David. The Samuel had to actually say, don't you have another? Kid? None of none of these guys are the one that I'm that God's putting his anointing on to be king. You sure you don't have another son? And that's when Jesse was like, 
Oh, yeah, that's right. My little twerp son, my little youngest son. He's oh, the shepherd. He just takes care of the sheep. Oh, never mind. What? Samuel said, bring him to me. As soon as he saw him, God said, this is the king. Anoint him. He will be the next king of Israel. And why do you think that God promoted him in that way? Because when David was watching over the sheep, even though his brothers didn't believe in him, his father barely remember, <laughs> remembered he existed. And yet David was the one that took down Goliath. How is it possible that he could create this greatness? And how is it possible that he then became the king of Israel and one of the greatest men that's ever lived? God even says about him that David in Romans in the book in the New Testament, that David in the book of Acts, that David was a man after my own heart. David fulfilled his God given purpose. And when he was done, he was buried. He died and he was buried when he was finished. And when God said, you have fulfilled my purpose and destiny for my life because you've been a man after my own heart. How let's back up for a moment and really drill down on this just for a moment. What made David ready for Goliath? You know, David wasn't taking care of his father's sheep because he was trying to become great. He wasn't taking care of the father's sheep because he wanted to find his destiny. He wasn't taking care of his father's sheep so that he could become king. He had no way to connect those dots. He had no understanding. Anybody was looking for him. He didn't even understand God was looking for him. But what did he do as the shepherd? We know what he did as a shepherd of his father's sheep, which shows that he was taking care of his father's things. He was taking care. He was being responsible for the thing that belonged to somebody else. You know, when you're responsible and, and you do a great job with something that belongs to somebody else, it's only a matter of time before great things like that will belong to you. And if you would watch David's life for a moment, he said, I've killed the lion. When a lion came to attack the sheep, I killed the lion to protect the sheep. When a bear came to attack the sheep, I killed the bear to protect the sheep. What do we see is becoming a pattern in his life. He did the thing that had to be done to protect the sheep. In other words, he conquered the lion that came against the sheep. He conquered the bear that came against the sheep. And then he conquered the giant that came against God's people. And this is the pattern of learning how to shortcut your way into God's purpose and destiny for your life. David conquered whatever came between him and God's or his father's sheep. In this case, David conquered what was right in front of him. He wasn't conquering what was right in front of him in order to become a king one day. He was conquering what was right in front of him because that's the shortest route. That is the shortcut to God's ultimate purpose for your life without you even knowing it. When he conquered the lion, it made him ready. When the bear came, he, when he conquered the bear, it made him ready when the giant came, when he conquered the giant, it made him ready to take on the mantle of the, the army of God's people and then the nation of Israel and the ruler of God's kingdom on earth at that time. Where did that all start? He conquered what was right in front of him. I like to say it this way. Your calling is found in your conquering. Your calling is found in your conquering. What is the thing that is right in front of you? Conquer that. What is the thing that is right in front of you? Is it an apology that you need to make? Conquer it. Is it a class you need to take? Conquer it. Is it a bill you need to pay? T pay it. Is it an idea you need to pursue? Pursue it. But conquer the thing that is right in front of you. Conquer waking up every day at the same time and make your bed and you are conquering what's right in front of you. You know, if you wake up at the same time, I know this might sound so trivial. It might sound so unspiritual. But Steve Jobs, one of the greatest inventors in all of history, every one of us is benefiting from the technology advancements that he and the company he built in Apple and all the subsidiaries that has changed the world, revolutionized the world. It's made the world this easy to to be in touch with and communication, except I don't need to explain that simplest tool that we we have is the greatest one of the greatest tools that's ever been invented. 
But he said something this, you communicate greatness. Greatness is communicated in everything you do. Greatness is communicated in everything you do. In other words, when you do the smallest thing that's right in front of you, but you do it great. And then the next thing that comes and confronts you and you do it great. Do an apology. Great. Nobody wants to hear somebody apologize and say, eh, by the way, if I ever did anything to offend you, I'm sorry. That's not great. And you know what? Your level of life will rise to your weakest point of how you do the things that you do, because life is not one thing. It's a hundred or a thousand moving parts in life to contribute towards who you are and what you accomplish in this world for the glory of God and for the advancement of good in this world. And if you would treat every one of those hundred parts or every one of those thousand parts or every one of those little things and make that little thing great. It is only a matter of time. If you will make the little thing great, then the next thing that comes, you make that great. Make an apology. Great. Make a make a environment. Great. Make a conversation. Great. You know how easy it is to be sitting around a table with people and everybody's on their cell phone. Disrupt that and make that moment great. Maybe it'll become great just by praying for each person and all the people there. Maybe it'll become great by you asking something about that person. I know this is drilling down into simple little things, but th that's why it's so important to know that greatness is communicated in everything you do. And if you don't do everything great, everything we can't do everything. But if you'll do the one thing that's right in front of you and do it with excellence, do it with faith, do it with love, do it with care, make it special. And you keep moving forward in that way with each thing you face. The world, the vision, the dreams that you have will be um, will swiftly run into you and you will run into them. You will run in to your destiny because it's looking for someone who's developed the character that it can entrust greatness to. Thanks for joining me today on Think Like a Champion. Conquer what's right in front of you. In fact, take a moment, subscribe on the YouTube, Apple or Spotify, wherever you're watching or listening. Leave a rating or review or a comment if you got something out of this today. Start your day every day consistently. Fail as many times as you have to to become consistent at the first thing you do every day with greatness. The smallest thing. Brush your teeth great. Pray great. Just give God your all great. Now, would you take a moment and pay it forward? Partner with me in helping us move this mission forward. Your gift of any amount makes a huge impact in how many people that we're able to reach. I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to keep bringing value and I'm going to keep bringing um, life changing truth to think like a champion. If you and if you get something out of this, please consider partnering with me to help expand our community of champions. You can partner with me by visiting lifechangerschurch.com. You can make a tax deductible gift, lifechangerschurch.com. And I want to thank you in advance for doing that and helping us reach more people with the love and victory that God created us to walk in. Thanks for joining me today on Think Like a Champion. God bless.